Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and uh, my apologies if I seem a bit bleary-eyed to you. Um, I stayed up ridiculously late last night after doing my two impromptu videos. I went all through yesterday thinking I'm not in the mood to do a video <clears throat> I probably won't get one done and then um, promptly did two in a row, one of which was all about cat fights and werewolves and which had a reading in it which is relevant to this, this video and the other of which was um, my reading of a witchy folk tale. So from no videos to two videos and um, a very late night and I also spent time yesterday um, working on my novel outline which again I had thought I wouldn't do and did. So yesterday went from being a kind of unsatisfactory, slightly um, out of sorts kind of day to being actually quite a good day and um, I enjoyed making the videos and I've enjoyed reading all of your responses to the videos and um, You've really encouraged me to make this video because in the video about cat bites and werewolves and so on, all is explained in that video, uh, I did a reading and I did a reading using a deck that I happen to have to hand and that I like very much and that is the Wicker deck by Sally Morningstar, um, illustrated by Danuta Mayer. Um, it's a wonderful deck, um, it's one of these decks that I resisted for a long time, partly because I didn't, I hadn't seen enough of it to know what it was like. Um, and I, I, I'll be honest, I, I expected that it would be a little bit kind of twee and a bit light. Um, and, you know, I was wrong. It is actually a gorgeous deck with lots of interesting uh, symbolism and occult meanings and so on. Uh, just up my alley. And, um, Anyway, a number of you said, I said in my video, um, perhaps I should do a walkthrough of this deck, and a number of you said, yes, please do. So that is what I'm doing. So um, what can I tell you about the deck? So I think I'm right in saying that this was originally um, an independently published deck. It was either independently published or it was published um, by a previous publisher and then it went to a, another mainstream publisher. So there are at least two editions. Um, I have the most recent edition which is still available. Um, I believe the first edition uh, on the cards there were no numbers and you'll see on this set of cards there are numbers, although they're not particularly relevant uh, numbers. Uh, they're just, I think, to help you find them in the guidebook, find the, the um, explanations in the guidebook. And uh, so it's possible to get this deck in a number of different formats. So as I say, this is still available. I will put the link below. So if you want to get this, which is the, the card set in a nice hardback uh, box, um, lidded box. Uh, it's the card set which comes with the cards, obviously, and also with a little white book, um, uh, the Wicked Deck. And you can also get separately, I think this is out of print now, but you can get it second hand, uh, this book by Sally Morningstar called The Wicker Book, which obviously uses the Wicker cards in um, illustrating it and actually does provide guidance to the Wicker cards as well. So there's a section on each of the cards in this, this book. Um, what you can also get is you can get the two together in something called the Wicker Pack, which I think is also out of print. And actually, the last time I looked, it... it changes hands for quite a lot of money if it's a full set. Um, just be careful if you do buy the Wicker Pack, because sometimes what you'll actually get is just the Wicker Book. It's advertised as the Wicker Pack by second-hand booksellers, but it's actually just the Wicker Book. So, um, what to do? There's all this con confusion. What do you do? Do about it all. Well, very simple. All you need, really, to enjoy this deck is this. Because in the little white book of this, are all the explanations for the cards extracted from here. The only difference here is that in each of um, each of the explanation sections here in this book, you also get, as well as getting the information about the meaning um, and the symbolism and the keywords, etc., etc., you also get um, a magical exercise for each of the cards, which doesn't, which don't appear in here. So if you're interested in doing magic with the cards, magical practice with the cards, it's worth seeking out the Wicca book but you do not need it. It also has information about um, uh, a sort of background and history to Wicca um, uh, in more depth than does the little white book in here. And it has information about how to create circles, altars, sacred spaces. It's got some craft exercises as well. Um, it's got information about how to make a magic wand, um, how to make incense, etc. It also has um, information about how to make a rather gorgeous planetary altar cloth which is actually um, based on one of the spreads that she gives in the book, which I'll, I'll tell you about shortly. Um, 
So this is a nice book to have and, and getting it second hand is fairly easy. Uh, so I did the obvious thing, I got the book second hand and I got the deck as well. So um, I'm happy with that, that gives me everything I need. If I'd only got this then I would still be happy because there's plenty of information in there. So what do you get in here? Well as I say in the book you get a little bit of um, introduction to um, the deck and then you go straight into the meanings and let me just turn the light down a bit so that you can see. In fact, if I turn that light out, excuse me, that might be easier to see. So, um, let's see if we can focus on... Ah, now, excuse the darkness while I just show you here, that you get the information on, you get a little picture of the card, information on the card, name and number, the keyword, which in this case, um, Aradia is heritage, um, the vibration, it tells you which chakra each of the cards resonates with, um, keywords for the card as well, and information on um, the image on the card, so here it says Aradia, Queen of the Witches, and acknowledges that the daughter of the goddess Diana is alleged to have lived in Italy during the 14th century, and gives you some history on, on that. Aradia or Aradia, I say Aradia. Um, then about m the meaning, you don't get the magical exercise that you get in the bigger book, but what you do get at the bottom is what Sally Morningstar calls high notes and low notes. And this is a bit like if you imagine each of the cards existing on a spectrum, um, from one end to the other of that spectrum. You might say positive or negative, although actually most of the meanings are relatively positive, so I don't think negative quite works in that context. Um, and she gives you kind of meanings for both of those. Another way of looking at it is you might think of the high note as almost like the upright meaning and the low note as reversed if you were if you were thinking in, in a kind of tarot sense. Let's put the light back up a bit so we can actually see what we are doing. Forgive me, I might have to change the light again so you can see the cards clearly because I want you to, to, to see what's there. So, um, in the little book you've got information on each of the cards, there are 42 of them. Then there's a section on um, using and interpreting the cards. There's a section on spreads, um, uh, including some very interesting spreads. The star spread, which is um, one that I'm going to talk through with you in a second, um, which uses the planets, that's what the altar cloth is based around. And also one at the end called um, the ascension spread. So if you're interested in chakras, then um, this spread is based on the seven chakras, um, which uh, feature in the deck, actually. So, um, a nice little white book, 64 pages, uh, full of information, uh, more than you need in order to make use of this deck and enjoy it, absolutely. So, um, that's very good. Uh, the deck is written by Sally Morningstar, as I said. Um, she, I think, is a, a hedge witch. A consultant um, uh, on the on the cards and certainly on this book are is Gwyn, who I think is a traditional witch. I know that these terms are a bit kind of contested, but I think that's um, how he would describe himself. Uh, and the illustration is by Danuta Mayer, who I believe illustrates or has illustrated some children's books. And the illustrations are gorgeous, just gorgeous. So what I'm going to do. <clears throat> is I'm going to go through the cards and what we'll do is we'll stop every so often um, and uh, we'll have a look and see what the cards, um, you know, what, what, what information we can get from some of these cards uh, just so you get a sense of what information is shared. So there we have Aradia. Really, really nice images. Now, one of the things that's worth um, saying, or two things I'm going to say, one is you'll find there's lots of animal imagery on these cards, so it works really well as a kind of animal familiars deck. And the other thing to say is I love the artwork on the faces. I saw a review of this deck somewhere, um, it might have been in a New Age magazine, which said that the, um, the faces in the deck have got a kind of other eerie otherworldly quality and and the reviewer was using this not as a criticism exactly but wasn't particularly being positive about that it was kind of um seeing that almost as a negative um but i see it as a great positive i'm not a big fan of those decks you get where it's very clear that faces on the decks are based on a real person so it, you know, there are some oracle decks where to my eye particularly the collage ones look a bit like um 
a kind of a stock photo of somebody has been taken and then just been kind of touched up to look as though it's part of this um, deck. This is not what this looks like. This looks like genuine, genuinely new created artwork specifically for the deck and each of the faces has its own character. Um, and I like that because I want my Oracle decks and my Tarot de decks to transport me beyond the mundane world. I don't want them to be um, reminding me of the main mundane world. I don't want to be looking at my Oracle decks and thinking, yeah, that probably is a supermodel from somewhere. Um, or that that picture of, you know, the Emperor in that Tarot deck is probably somebody who... Um, you know, it, it's a stock photograph from uh, from the internet that they've used and just touched up. Now, I know that some of them look good and some people like that, so if that's your thing, that's great. It's just, just not my thing. Um, here we have the bat, number two, rebirth and consciousness. So, yeah, lots of animal imagery. Chalice, fertility. Um, that reminds me a bit of um, the Ace of Cups with the dove coming down and dropping... Um, a big glob of dove spit, by the look of it, into the chalice. Um, and actually, one of the things that's interesting about the deck is you do see some, I, I think, tarot-influenced images on the deck. You see obvious Wiccan symbolism and traditional witchcraft symbolism and some Celtic symbolism. Um, but you do see some very um, overt tarot-related symbolism and some that you might even say is... Um, from what you might call a Judeo-Christian tradition, and um, that's kind of interesting, I think. Uh, I'll, I'll say more about that when we get there. <clears throat> so there we have Bell Awakening. And again, look, there's Gaia healing. So again, just facial expressions, just... I think these cards would work really well um, for path working and meditation. If you wanted to step into these cards and meet some of these beings, meditate on them and, and uh, meet some of the beings, then um, I'm sure you could do that. Uh, again, we've got the wolf there, familiar ally. Then we have the lady, embodiment. Just beautiful colours. Lots of detail, lots of symbolism. So let's have a look at this one, actually. So, because um, there's various different things on this card. So we're looking at the lady. <clears throat> um, embodiment. So the vibration here is of archetypes. The keywords are embodiment, character, and empowerment. Now this one doesn't have, um, so, so vibration, I mentioned uh, it tells you about which chakra it resonates to, but there's obviously 42 cards, so not all of them have vibrations related to the chakra. So, for example, the familiar, the previous card, vibrates to the astral level. Uh, this one um, vibrates to the archetypal level. Keywords, embody uh, embodiment, character, empowerment. The lady is another term for the high priestess, tarot reference. She represents the energies of the goddess in sacred ceremonies and ritually embodies the character and quality of a chosen deity when magic is being made. Her presence complements that of her lord, the high priest. Together they watch, protect and guide what happens in the circle. And the meaning here is um, the lady signifies that you may have been feeling different recently. New blood seems to be coursing through your veins and you are changing as a result. It is possible to embody any characteristics we, pu we choose and in so doing match the energies that are presenting themselves to us in our outer world. I should be wearing my glasses. Um, where are we? The lady indicates that you do have the ability to stand up for yourself, even if it doesn't seem like it sometimes. You are the power behind your reality. If your reality does not fit your dream, start to change it now. Call for the energies that are required to fill you with whatever you need. Believe in your power and your strength. The high note is all that you need is present. And the low note is issues of disempowerment are highlighted. And then that's the information that you'd get in the little white book. But I'm reading from this book. So the additional information you get is a magical exercise. And the magical exercise for this card is called Embodying Isis. Create an altar to Isis, the Egyptian goddess of fertility and magic, using lapis lazuli crystals, lotus fragrances, moons and stars, two deep blue candles, 
cacao imagery, palm leaves and any Isis iconography you may have. On the evening of a full moon, light nine white night lights around yourself and your altar. Face the north and call for Isis to touch you with her magical grace. So a nice little ritual um, for the card there. My arm's getting sore <laughs> holding that up. Um, so let's move on. Uh, oh, I've got them in the wrong order now. Green man. Wonderful runic imagery there. Mirror. Perception. Silver bow. Love. And this is one that came up um, in our look at the card yesterday. Cloak camouflage. And you'll see, obviously, we've got um, chakra imagery there. So let's just have a quick look and see what this card um, says. Um, so uh, you see this little fox there as well. So that's relevant. So what we have here uh, is cloak camouflage. Vibration, it vibrates to the astral. Um, keywords are camouflage, containment, and invisibility. <clears throat> and it says the cloak defines the boundary and hence has the ability to camouflage what it contains. Death is sometimes depicted as a cloaked figure, camouflaging the void within. And you'll notice, of course, that it's card number 13, which from a tarot sense uh, does relate to um, death. Um, the magical, cl magical cloak can be of any colour, representing whatever is needed. Um, uh, etc. 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 Wearing a cloak will help to deflect, define energetic boundaries and can act in very much the same way as the magical circle of protection. In mythology, the Norse god Odin is often depicted wearing a cloak. And I am going to put my glasses on because I just need to wear my glasses. Okay, where were we? Meaning, the cloak signifies a time to hold yourself and your ideas with care and to proceed with caution, not revealing yourself or your intentions to others too soon. Um, da, 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 da. Magical exercise is fox medicine. Call to fox when invisibility is required. Visualise yourself in a fox skin and become fox as you walk softly through environments unnoticed by the crowd. High note, the wise one in you knows when to maintain silence. The low note. Observe, watch, and wait. Curb impulsiveness. So there are no specific references to the chakras in the text, um, apart from this issue of um, a magical cloak being of any colour and defining your energetic boundaries. So um, it's just interesting that there are references there that are not obtrusive. You don't need to know about chakras, etc., etc., to... Um, uh, to pick up on uh, some of this, but at the same time, if you want to know about them, then you can. Um, uh, that's absolutely fine. So, um, that's a lovely card. I really like that card. So, um, where are we? Yes, here we are. The High Priest. Now, this is one. That has almost kind of Egyptian imagery, which isn't surprising when one remembers that uh, modern Wicca, as practiced by Gerald Gardner and so on, was influenced by uh, or had influences of ceremonial magic um, within it. If you know your history, if you read anything by Doreen Valiente and others, you'll know that Alistair Crowley um, was influential to uh, Gerald Gardner and I know that there's lots of contentious stuff about all of that about whether that's true etc etc but you know Doreen Valiente, Valiente knew her stuff and she knew all of them um, so I would recommend reading her book Witchcraft for Today if you haven't read it is a must read for anyone interested in or is it Witchcraft for Tomorrow I can't remember which one it's called <laughs> I think it's Witchcraft for Tomorrow um, uh, is a must read for anyone who's interested in uh, Wicca, witchcraft or any of that kind of thing, magical practice in general. The broomstick, isn't that lovely? Sun and moon. Looks like hedge riding, doesn't it? Moving between the worlds. Moving a bit quicker now, otherwise we're not going to get through this. The pentacle. Evocation. Obvious magical symbolism. 
Then we have the serpent power. That, again, seems to be almost a Judeo-Christian Adam and Eve kind of image. And the Glastonbury reference there with the tower, um, or the tower rather, and the serpent in Eden. But of course, um, as I say, you know, ceremonial magic, which influenced things like the Rider Waite tarot deck, um, also influence Wicca. So you see some of these different strains coming through and that's the wonderful thing I think about neo-pagan um, practices that it is possible to bring in lots of different influences and they don't have to be contradictory. I think a lot of people, it, it irks me when I hear people um, describing Wicca um, or any kind of witchcraft as being antithetical to other religious belief systems, including Christianity, because there is a stream of, um, you know, I understand the uh, the antithetical feeling or, or the antipathy towards the church or to very stringent dogma from any religion, including Christian religions. Um, but what we have to remember is that there is a mystical tradition in Christianity as well. And in Christianity, in parts of Christianity, um, the Gnostics and others who, who, who developed and built a one-to-one um, -one relationship with with God, you know, is, are doing very much what many modern Wicca, Wicc Wiccans would feel they were doing in their relationship with God, Goddess. Um, so I don't find it contradictory. I just find it fascinating. Wand, six rayed star. This one came up yesterday as well. Black cat psychism. Maya trying to psych me out. Actually, it doesn't really look like Maya. Maya doesn't have a face like that. Maya, that's, that's a kind of severe face. You would not mess with that cat. Maya's got a kind face. Except when it's Fluffy Cat. She does not like Fluffy Cat. Athame, Commander of Power. So, you know, traditional Wiccan um, tools. The Holy Stone, sometimes called a Hag Stone. Nemesis lessons with some goddess um, uh, characters in here. Cauldron, the womb. Beautiful. Cave retreat. <clears throat> Spider patterns. Fairy references as well. The Queen of Elfheim. Cord initiation. And again, ceremonial magic um, uh, indications within the, the pillars. Um, also, uh, um, reference to the Tatva symbols, which are used for path working. Um, and made astral travel. Raven, keeper of secrets. Another fairy influence with um, spell. Beautiful. The horn god, life force. Then another seemingly Judeo. Um, well, certainly Jewish and also Judeo-Christian reference here uh, with the Hebrew letters for yod He vav He, the God name, um, linked to the cone of power and to the four elements. And of course, in, in tarot, um, particularly if you, fo if you follow any of the Golden Dawn uh, traditions of tarot, you find that the yod He vav He is um, uh, related to different suits in uh, different suits in the tarot and to different um, court cards in the tarot. Um, in Kabbalah, which can be linked to, to tarot, um, is linked to the different worlds of Kabbalah, etc. So, um, what it's what's nice about this is I think is it, it's showing that different traditions can be woven together or at least can cross refer to each other in useful ways. You don't need the Yod Heh Vav in, in order to be able to work with the four elements as symbolised here. Um, but at the same time, uh, why not? Why not have it if you are if you are looking for other ways of um, representing what you're trying to represent? Crystal ball, insight, sh 
Checking up. Holy water for purification. Sword for for um, aspiration. I thought it said inspiration for a moment. <laughs> and then a great traditional um, image here uh, of a wizard. You don't often see wizards in relation to Wicca. Um, but here we have wizard for um, spiritual impeccability. Um, kind of fantasy image there of the lion. Owl, wisdom keeper. Book of Shadows, experience. And then finally, this is the card I pulled yesterday in my reading, Crone Release. So um, I want to just finish by uh, talking to you about the um, spread, or one of the spreads that she works with in here, um, which I think is absolutely great, and it's called the Star Spread. Um, put the light down a bit. <clears throat> The star spread. So you have seven positions on this star spread, all arranged around a six-pointed star with one in the middle. Um, so at the top you have a card representing Saturn. At the bottom you have one representing the Moon. At the bottom left you have one representing, I'm doing it to your left, Mercury. At the bottom right you have one representing Venus. At the top left you have, sorry, at the top, I've got myself confused now. The top you have Saturn. Bottom, you have the Moon. Bottom right, you have Venus. Bottom left, you have Mercury. Top left, you have Mars. Top right, you have Jupiter. Um, so position one is Saturn, and that looks at your restrictions and how, you're, how you can transcend your lower self. Then, uh, so obviously there's an astrological meanings that are woven in here. Uh, position two is the moon, which is your subconscious factors, inner world influences. You can do this with any deck of cards, of course. Position three is Mercury. That's the lesson to be learned because Mercury is the wisdom keeper. Position four, Jupiter. That's the forces that support you, where you can call for help because Jupiter, Jupiter is the um, great benefic um, and very helpful. Uh, position five is Venus, your gift, your way of beauty at this time. Position six is Mars, what action is required, what must you consider doing in order to move forward. And then position sun, uh, position seven is the sun, that's in the centre, um, and that's the unifying principle, the central issue regarding your current de destiny. Um, and she recommends that this is a very powerful spread, and she says here, this spread aligns you with your path of destiny and connects you with planetary powers. Use it for revelations about your soul purpose, potential, and lessons. This is a deep reading and should not be used more than twice a year. Shuffle the pack, then center and call your guides to you. Ask for guidance while you're shuffling. When you feel ready, hold the pack face down and cut the cards. Take out your chosen card and lay it face down in position one. Continue until seven cards are laid down as shown and turn your cards one at a time and interpret each one before moving to the next. And just to show you again, that is, that is the spread. I hope that's made it clear. It probably have not It's not focusing very well, is it? Okay, that's okay. We'll manage. Um, that's the star spread. There's also a um, relationship spread, um, uh, and as I say, the ascension spread as well. So, um, a lovely deck, lovely cards, lovely guidebook, um, one that I um, really, really adore and think many of you will too. The Wicker Deck by Sally, Morningstar and Wynne and illustrated by Danuta Mayer. More details, as ever, are below. Alright, thanks everyone. See you all soon. Bye.